Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Sing with me, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Hello, hello, and how are you? Hi, Miss Danita and Charlotte. How are you all doing today? Well, it's I'm so glad to see you. So very, very glad to see you. My name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? My name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? We are so glad. So very glad to see you. How do you do? What's your name? How do you do? And what's your name? How do you do? We are so glad, so very glad to see you. How do you do? All right, well, it's time for us to keep moving in the account. The account of Moses and Aaron with Pharaoh and the children of Israel and the miraculous things that God has done with them. I see we have Sandra and Isaac and Serena, Sine, Aiden and Naomi, Vonda. Hi, hi, hi. I am so glad you guys are watching and sharing and thank you. All right, well, we're going to start with our conversation to God. Hello, Erica and MJ. We're going to start with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your grace and your mercy, your loving kindness towards us. I thank you, God, that when we don't see a way, when we don't know a way, that you will make a way as we put our trust in you. And just like we see Moses and Aaron put their trust in you and you led the children of Israel out of Egypt to Canaan land. God, we put our trust in you today and we thank you that you are a sure foundation and we can do that in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, so we are, we're at the part where, my friend, we're at the part where, oh, hi, Erica and Hannah Faye, where the children of Israel have, they've just left Egypt. They're, they're going out and God told them <clears throat> that he wanted them to go a different way. There was an easy way for them to get to Canaan land, to Cana, Canaan land, but God told them to go a different way. He said, uh, order the Israelites to turn back and camp at Pi Heriath between Mid Mid Midjo, <laughs> something like that, and the sea. Camp there along the shore across from Be Baal Zephon. Then Pharaoh will think the Israelites are confused. They are trapped in the wilderness. And once Again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. So heart, Pharaoh's heart is hardened again. After he let the children of Israel go, his heart is hardened again. Um, and he chased after the children of Israel. He was going to chase after the children of Israel. God said, I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. So again, God did it. He did this just to show 
to show Pharaoh who God truly is because Pharaoh thought he was God and he had that last say. And then he did it to show the children of Israel who God truly is because they were acting like they didn't know. And so he said, I'm just going to show you who I really am. And so after this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelite camped there as they were told. Now, when the word had reached Egypt that the Israelites had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their mind. What have we done letting all those Israelite slaves get away? All of a sudden they realized all the Israelites were gone and they were, uh, they said they were going to go and sacrifice to God. So they realized that and Pharaoh decided, oh no, we're going after them. So Pharaoh harnessed his chariots and called up his troops. He took with him 600 of Egypt's best chariots along with the rest of the chariots of Egypt, each with its commander. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh and the king of Egypt, hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, so he chased after the people of Israel who had left <clears throat> with fist raised in defiance. The Egyptians chased after them with all the forces in Pharaoh's army. So it was a mighty army going after the children of Israel. But I told you, when it's you and God, who has a majority? You and God. So the children of Israel, and it was many of them, had God on their side. It didn't matter how many were on Pharaoh's side. They had the majority. The Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they were camped beside the shore of pi Hahirath, across from Belzephon. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They could see them. They cried out to the Lord and they said, Moses, why did you bring us out here to this wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be slaves in Egypt than to be corpse in the wilderness. Sometimes people have to help you in spite of yourself. Sometimes people will have to take you in spite of yourself. And Moses had to take them in spite of the in spite of who Egypt was. Moses had to take them. Um, then Moses said, Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Then the Lord Himself will fight. He's gonna fight for you. Just stay calm. And sometimes people have to tell you this. Don't freak out. The Lord is on our side. He will fight for us. Just be calm. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff. Raise your hand over the sea. That's what he told Moses to do. Pick that staff up. That staff was something else, wasn't it? So he tells him to pick that same staff up and raise it up over the Red Sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. So the middle of that sea was going to be dry and the children of Israel were going to walk on dry ground to get to the other side. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops, his chariots, and his charioteers. When my glory is displayed through them, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the then the angel of God, who had been leading the people as the cloud, he he moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved to um, the pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. So that now at first the cloud was leading them. Now the cloud is behind them. The cloud is separating the Egyptians from the children of Israel. As darkness fell, the cloud turned to 
fire lighting up the night for the children of Israel, but it did not help the Egyptians. And they never ran into the Egyptians, never ran into the Israelites. The Israelites never ran into the Egyptians. The cloud, that cloud of fire separated the two. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea and the Lord opened up a path through the water and a strong east wind blew. The wind blew all night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with, with walls of water on each side. So the Red Sea was, was, had divided and it was a wall of water on one side. It was a wall of water on the other side and it was dry at the bottom and the children of Israel crossed over walked on dry land. Then the Egyptians, all of Pharaoh's horse, all of his horses, his chariots, his charioteers, they chased them in the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, now the children of Israel, they're walking in the dark. They're walking at night. But just before dawn, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and the cloud and he threw their forces into total confusion so now the children of Israel they had crossed over the Egyptians are trying to cross over to catch them but God was in the picture he confused everything he twisted their chariot wheels making their chariots um, making their chariots difficult to drive. Let's get out of here. That's what the, the Egyptians started screaming. Let's get out of here. Away from these Israelites. The Egyptians shouted, The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. When all the Israelites had reached the other side, the Lord said to Moses, Raise your hand over the sea. Then the waters will rush back and cover the Egyptians and their chariots and their charioteers. So as the sun began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea and the waters rushed back into their usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but the Lord swept them into the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots and the charioteers. The entire army of Pharaoh was covered, covered in the Red Sea. Of all the Egyptians who had chased the Israelites into the sea, not one single one survived. Not one. There were no survivors. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground as the water stood like walls on both sides of them. That is how the Lord rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. The Israelites saw the bodies of the Egyptians washed upon the seashore. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power of the Lord and when they saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe. They put their faith in the Lord and in his servant Moses. When God gives you instruction, First, believe them. The first part of believing is to hear, because you have to hear what you believe. They Moses believed what he heard because he had saw God work. He had saw God work from the moment that he saw him at that burning bush. He saw God work when he told when God told him to throw his his uh, staff down and it turned into a snake. This was before he took the trip. He saw God work when he and Aaron went and talked to, to Pharaoh. He saw God work 10 times doing miraculous things. He saw God work. And the children of Israel got to experience not firsthand like Moses, but they still got to experience some of those things. They saw God work. They heard some things. They heard that the firstborn were going to die of the Egyptians. But theirs didn't die. Theirs didn't die. They saw darkness over there in Egypt. But they didn't, they were, they had lights. 
they saw God. So when God gives you a word, you trust God in that word. And then you've got to do what he said. M Moses was a little shaky at first, but then God said, go do this, and Moses did it. God said, go do that, and Moses did it. When God tells you to do something, we have got to move out and do what God said. Now, God, <laughs> God was listening. God had a plan. And he would not let the fussing Israelites stop his plan. He had to show Israel he was God, but he had to also show the Egyptians that he was God. And so in spite of Israel fussing, God had Moses' heart. And Moses was doing what he said, and, and thus the children of Israel went across. But if you continue to read Moses taking them to Canaan land, oh boy, did they fuss. And did they get in disbelief? We cannot afford to not believe God. Just because you don't see God working does not mean he's not working. Oh, God is always working. He is working things out for us all the time. And we need to know that. Just because you don't see, boom, or he's not moving when you want him to. That doesn't mean he's not working. He is working all of the time. Right? Yes. Yes, he is. Oh. All right, so that is actually the end of the lesson that we're doing for Moses right now. So they crossed over out of the hand of Pharaoh, and now they are to follow the lead of God. And we've got to, again, we've got to learn to follow the lead of God. Remember, uh, yesterday our lesson was about them having a sacrifice. They, they had to sacrifice Every year, they were to sacrifice their sons, their firstborn son, the firstborn animal to the Lord. But they'd buy him back. So they bought him back by offering a, a sacrifice, a lamb to God. And that's how they would buy their sons back every year. And that was part of the Passover, uh, part of the Passover celebration. All right. So our song is because I'm just so stuck on what God can do. God can do anything. And we saw God do some miraculous things with the children of Israel. So we are going to sing about our magnificent God and how he is limitless in what he can do. There's only one thing God can't do. or And that one thing is God cannot fail. He cannot fail. So that's what we're going to sing about. Are you ready? I hope so. God can do anything, anything, anything. Oh, God can do anything but fail. He can save. He can heal. It's all according to his will. Oh, God can do anything but fail. Anything, 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 anything. Oh, God can do anything but fail. Anything. Anything, 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 oh God can do anything but fail. Yes, anything but fail. And sometimes I tell you, you'll be going through and you'll be wondering, is God here? Just trust him and keep moving. Trust him and keep moving. He is there. Remember our verse in Deuteronomy 31 and 8. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. So what? We don't have to fear or be dismayed. Our verse comes from, we're still doing this verse, Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. That's what we're doing today. All four verses. Okay, are you ready? All four verses. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. You got that? One more time. One more time. Proverbs 3, 5, and 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. All right, and so what is our fun song for today? Fun song, fun song. Ooh, I see Father Abraham. Did we do Father Abraham yesterday? Yeah, we did, but that's okay. We only did it once, so we can do it twice. We can do Father Abraham today. We're going to do Father Abraham today. And then Father Abraham is out of the count for the week, I think. I think that's how we're going to do that. He will be out of the count. All right. Here we go. Oh. And. All right, you guys ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord right hand. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right hand, left hand. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right hand, left hand, right foot. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, chin up. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right hand, left hand. Right foot, left foot, chin up, turn around, sit down. Woo! Wonderful exercise song and fun song. Okay, well, it's truly been my pleasure being with you today. And, oh, wow, we finished that fast. But um, tomorrow we're going to, we're going to, the, I've been telling you so much about Jesus I've been telling you so much about the goodness of God and the power of God and how we need to access that. But I'm not sure everybody knows that you have to be part of the kingdom of God. And so we're going to talk about how we fell off and how everybody can have access to uh, becoming part of the family of God. And we'll talk about that a little bit tomorrow. And... Um, living the adventurous life it, when you become a child of God when you live in the kingdom of God it becomes the ride of your life 
Yes, when you dare to believe in Jesus Christ. Don't you think that that was rather adventurous? That was an adventurous moment for Moses from the time he was born. Born when they were killing, uh, drowning the babies. And from him going into Pharaoh's house and then leaving and all of that. And we only did one, two-thirds of his life. We didn't get to the part where he went through the wilderness. We didn't even talk about that. The ride of your life. If you trust God, he will make a way out of no way. And we've got to know it. We've got to know that God will do just that. Out of no way, he will make a way. When it seems like it's all over, he will make a way. Uh, What's his name? Jehoshaphat said, King Jehoshaphat said, Lord, we don't know what to do. But our eyes are on you. And God made a way. God made a way. He will fight for you. So we've got to learn. We've got to stick to it and find out and let God fight for us. We are living in a time right now where we need the Lord to fight for us. So make sure you learn to trust him. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time that I've had today with all of those who heard your word. I pray, God, that you will stir in us and stir in up stir up in us the gift that you have given us. I pray that we will be a light in this dark world. I pray that we will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we will share it at home and abroad. I pray that we will make a difference where we go. And I pray, Lord, that you will make a way for us. I thank you for all that you do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And so it is. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know. Make sure you share them with someone and have a wonderful rest of your day.